Well, hi there, and welcome to The Day I Learned About, the show where we shower you in golden goodness. Everyone knows the story of King Midas, right? The king, when he touched something, it would turn to gold. Which is supposed to sound awesome until you can't eat or you try to touch somebody you love and they turn to gold. I think it's supposed to be a cautionary tale of tragedy about how money can't buy you real happiness or something something. Being completely isolated is a small price to pay for unlimited gold. So I say, might as well get all that gold. Or as my grandma used to say, pimpin' ain't easy, bitch. Yeah, she was a pretty aggressive older lady. But at last, I have zero golds. My only real life experience with gold is I had a goldfish once. And he lived in a castle. And the reason he lived in a castle was because I crammed him in there. And when my parents asked where the goldfish went, I told him it ran away. Yeah, so I was four when I murdered my first pet. You know, that thing that serial killers do? Whatever. I'm fine, I'm fine. Anyways. Gold is the ultimate status symbol. Gold has magic properties. Put some bling bling on white trash and it turns him to a big time baller. Put a little gold on your gorilla and you're looking hella chilla. Ask old Dirty Years Muncie what his favorite thing in the world is. I love Rotten Tootin' Gold! Gold, I tells ya! Yeah, he does. But why is gold so precious? First off, it's rare. Humans have been mining gold since the beginning of time. Yet all the gold we've ever mined would only fit into three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Which is equal to about 55 million cans of beer. Again, this does sound like a lot, but that wouldn't even be two cans of beer per adult in Canada. Not even enough to get buzzed. Especially if it's American beer. Why even bother? Also, gold never tarnishes like other metals. It's soft and easy to work with, but most awesomely, gold is from space. That's right, kids. Gold is created by the force of two stars colliding, or one giant star that creates an explosion called a supernova. This massive explosion creates such pressure that it forces protons and electrons together to form neutrons. Neutrons have no repelling charge, so heavy iron elements can easily absorb them, creating other elements like silver, gold, and eventually uranium. The only other event in the universe that creates this amount of pressure was when a girl asks, Now be honest, do I look fat in this? It's a trap! General Akbar knows. So after the sun explodes, all this dust and debris just floating through space, gathering up mass, eventually becoming planets of molten lava. As these planets cool from their molten state, gravity pulls all these heavy metals deep into the core. Some eventually get pushed to the surface through volcanic activity, creating veins of precious metals accessible from the Earth's surface. However, most of Earth's gold remains deep in its core. There is enough precious metals in the Earth's core to cover the entire surface of the planet with a 4 meter thick layer. Or 16.66 quadrillion Mr. T's. That's a lot of gold. And I pity the fool who uses any other unit of measurement. Easier to find deposits have come from when meteors have hit the Earth's surface. Just like in the Bible when God made it rain on the dinosaurs. I love all my creations. Daddy's gonna Daddy's make it rain up in here. here. Oops. Oops. So, short of getting pummeled by God's bar shrap, how else can we get more gold? I suggest buying yourself a golden retriever. That way, you don't need to collect the gold yourself. Oh, that's a cute joke. Another way would be make it yourself. All you need is the optimism of a medieval alchemist and a philosopher's stone. Yeah, the very philosopher's stone from Harry Potter. The character, Nicholas Flamel, was a real person and actually an alchemist. True story. The philosopher's stone was a mythical element that could turn base metals into gold. Also, it was said it could make a person immortal. This was just a myth until some Japanese dude in 1924 actually figured out a transmutation process. By using neutron bombardment on mercury, he was able to synthesize gold. Uh, one catch, the gold is radioactive. AKA make your skin fall off if you touch it. AKA theft proof. However, it is scientifically possible to create non-radioactive gold. All you're gonna need is a couple kilometers of land and something called a particle accelerator. What this bad boy does is accelerates particles to incredibly high speeds. Now, if we bombard a piece of lead with these accelerated particles, eventually the properties of the lead will change to gold. So, one wrinkle in this plan is a particle accelerator runs about five billion dollars, and it would take 50 million years to produce one gram of gold. You could always build 50 million particle accelerators and run them simultaneously to produce one gram of gold a year. All depends on your budget, I guess. 
So, making gold is out of the question, therefore, you must hoard it. Any doomsday prepper worth his weight in gold would recommend keeping a little gold under the mattress for a rainy day. Just in case total economic collapse, the zombie apocalypse, or some kind stranger texts you a hot tip on the latest cryptocurrency and you need that cash now. However, just because gold has always been valuable, doesn't mean it's always going to be valuable. How about I trade you half this bar of gold for that bottle of water? Hmm. How about... no. The Swiss got the right idea. Enjoy gold while you can. Goldschläger is a cinnamon schnapps produced in Switzerland. It contains 13 milligrams of actual gold, valued at about 65 cents. <laughs> Bottoms up. Now you know, everything that glitters isn't gold. And if it is, it might be radioactive. If you enjoyed this, follow the golden rule of YouTube. Hit like, subscribe, and stay golden, pony boy. So long and stay frosty. <laughs>